What is up, my loves? It's been a while since I have been live here on Instagram, at least by myself. I've been partnering with some wonderful women and having chats on here. But by myself, it's been a while. Hello, hello, hello. I really wanted to talk about normalizing and things being normal and then being okay, right? Um, if you're watching the replay, welcome. My name is Naomi Jerez. I am a food and health coach and we are talking about normal over here. <laughs> yes. Oh, break free. Yes, exactly. Let's break free. Let's talk about it. Join in in the comments um, if you feel called to, okay? So I have always given a lot of thought to this thing about normal or how things should be or should not be based on what other people are doing or not doing and i think it's been a concept that has always that i've always questioned and it actually got me in a lot of trouble as a kid <laughs> because i would not want to follow along with what everybody else was doing and this is going to go into health and wellness right and then at the end i'm going to give you a few questions to ask yourself if you're in this position right because i feel like it starts to i don't know put us in that box right of you should do this because this is what other people are doing you should do this because this is what society says or this is what your friends are doing or this is what you do right or don't do it right because other people are not doing it and we start to get all this feedback at such a young age and we're like okay well we stop listening to ourselves and what we really want and like i said it used to get me in trouble a lot like one thing that would grind my gears was when somebody would tell me like don't do that and i'm like well why not you know like why not i this is what i want to do um and going into health and wellness specifically like as you get into adulting with going to work and becoming a parent and and just doing these and getting older right age um there are these things that start to become normal and that you start to hear as a child as you get older and you're like and then you start to form this reality for yourself and you start to see it as the path so for example as you get older, you all of a sudden become more tired. As you get older, your joint starts to hurt. As you get older, um, you have less energy. Your health goes, you know, to shits and things like that. So that's a lot of the examples I saw when I was growing up. And as I got older and became a mom, when I started to feel that way, I was like, oh, you know it's starting to happen to me and that's what should happen because it's normal right but i really want to encourage you to question that and to see if that's true i started to realize for myself that it was not true when i embarked on my health and wellness journey i was commuting around four hours a day round trip i had two little babies i was working a corporate job and i remember that you would go into the office and you would ask your co-workers how are you and the first thing that they would say is oh i'm tired Ugh. you know like i'm tired i don't have any energy life sucks and at first i would do the same thing like that's just what you did it was not normal to not be tired right and I'd be like, yeah, I'm tired. And people would assume that I was tired. They would be like, oh, you must be tired. You have two babies and you have like all these things that you're doing, right? But the truth was that the more I leaned into my health and wellness journey, I was not tired. You know, I, I really wasn't. So I started to check in with myself and see if I was really tired or if this is something that you would just say. And... I started to then say the truth and I would tell people and they're when they would say things like oh you must be so tired I'd be like no I'm actually okay and they would look at me like I had three heads right they're like what do you mean 
And I'm like, no, I, I actually have energy and all that. And even with friends, with family, it just started to be this trend where it was like, I don't have time to be healthier. My doctor told me that it was normal for me to be pre-diabetic. It's just how it goes. To have high blood pressure, to have cholesterol, to be in pain. It's just what happens as you get older. In fact, it's hereditary. So it's actually normal. And I'm here to challenge you with that and tell you that it's not. And you have the power to change that. Yes, you can be absolutely predisposed and it can be in your gene pool, no doubt about that. However, you do have power over your gene expression. And what happens in families most of the time is that they lead very similar lifestyles. So obviously the disease is gonna to start to present itself. And I don't know if you've heard the whole term of you're most likely like be careful who your friends are or who you hang out with most of your time because you're the average of those five people so if you're around people who are consistently complaining about being tired not being healthy their joints hurting not having time not having energy then guess what you're most likely to get sucked into that same lifestyle so when i was on my journey i would see other people saying things like it in very similar situations to me right saying things like oh i just don't have time i just don't have the energy i don't know how to do that like i don't have time to make a meal i don't have time to think about this i just go for what's easy right and i would think to myself i'm like wow that that like that just sounds not right for me right because i'm in the same situation and i'm able to do those things for myself because they matter and i'm very i take a strong stance at just at just things being how they are and i know now that a lot of the things that get in the way um and why people have so many excuses and they feel so comfortable with normalizing these things is one because they feel like they belong right everybody else is feeling like that so now all of a sudden you have something in common right and two it's like hard to start to make change for yourself right it's uncomfortable and it doesn't feel good so and it doesn't feel safe to start to do something new so all of a sudden, if you need to change your schedule to to make time to exercise, if you need to get up earlier to make time to exercise or to meal prep, if you have to take an extra five minutes to decide what you're going to order, then that all of a sudden becomes uncomfortable. And I know I've been there, especially in the beginning of my journey. It was a lot of learning of how things made me feel in order for me to then start to stick with them. And this was like a two, three year process for me where I realized, oh, if I don't do X, Y, Z, then I feel X, Y, Z. So for example, I would only work out once a week because that's all I had time for. Um, and that was Saturday mornings. Now I was getting up at 6 a.m. every single day or before to go commute, to go do my job. Um, and I had two little babies, so it wasn't like I was getting a full night's sleep, all right? Y'all, like, I had a one-year-old and a three-year-old. And so full night's sleeps were not happening. And the weekend were a time where I could do that. But what I noticed was that there were times I chose to sleep in because my brain started with, like, Naomi, you're tired, just stay in bed. And then those days, what I started to notice was that I was so cranky and i was like wow now i have to wait a whole week for me to go and have the opportunity to go to the gym again right so if i wanted to stick with normal normal is being in the, that pool of excuses of oh i'm tired i i'm a mom of two i'm a mom of two little kids i have a full-time job i can't do that like that's the stories that i was hearing around me all the time and 
I just knew that I did not want to stick with that 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 was not me and that I had other goals and that I had to make the choice and the decision to not be normal <laughs> right um I have a question here oh my god same for the longest time I didn't want to do something solely because everyone else was doing it I named it FOBO fear of being ordinary do you think this is similar absolutely I also didn't want to be I like I never want to be ordinary right like everybody has their own spice their own spunk and everybody I feel like represses that in because they have a fear of being seen because they have a fear of being different um of like going against the grain against the crowd and to be honest I was like that in a lot of ways publicly like I didn't want to be seen and didn't want to show myself but underneath like I was secretly and quietly working on these goals for myself and my wellness journey I kept silent and to myself for a very long time like two three four years for a very long time aside from people noticing that like I was physically changing because I was shy and kind of embarrassed of what I was doing because it was against the norm and people would look at me like I had three heads when I would tell them that I would get up early to go work out or that I would meal prep or that I was eating a certain way. It also happened when I was at events with other people and they would monitor and observe what I was eating and then make assumptions, right? Of the foods that I was having of what I was not having they would ask me questions so again going back to breaking free from being normal I had to be okay with being confident and comfortable in my choices and my decisions because I knew they had an impact on me and my goals and how I wanted to feel um, instead of not wanting to deal with that embarrassment and what they were going to tell me and think of me because I was doing things a certain way that they weren't doing, right? It was not part of the culture and having assumptions about me. I had to really come to terms with, you know, the whole thought of their ideas of their opinion of me is none of my business because in the end, I was the one who suffered right in the sense that if i ate something that didn't agree with me if i stayed up and drank too much and then i couldn't go work out like those decisions impacted solely me so if i was choosing something different to make somebody else comfortable and follow the norm then i was letting myself down and that's something i had to learn along the way right of of just living my life and being very comfortable and confident and stern with how I wanted to feel because again you need to realize that if you're making these choices based on normalcy and based on what other people are going to think and say then you're doing yourself a disservice because you're the one that's going to be with you all the time all the time you're going to be with yourself all the time and you're the only one that's going to feel how you're feeling so then if all of a sudden like you don't feel well you're you swell up you're bloated um you have indigestion you don't go do the workout that you said you were gonna do you don't do the meal prep that you say you're gonna do to please other people then you're the one that suffers my love you are the one that suffers because you wanted to make somebody else comfortable and that's the main thing that happens with breaking away from normalcy and following the crowd and the trends that you have to make peace with other people feeling a certain way about you okay but you know within your heart what you're doing and why you're doing it and it's not for them to understand right so everybody is it's not for them to understand and it's also for you to cut them some grace right because everybody is in a different level of their journey and sometimes these concepts or what you're doing is really difficult for other people to get 
number one number two is not for them to understand if you know in your heart why you're doing this and how it's benefiting you um so becoming really comfortable and confident in that right so I am going to give you three questions to ask yourself, right? Because I am in no way saying that this is something easy to do. It actually is quite difficult and quite scary because a lot of times it doesn't feel safe. You do have to be make um, intentional decisions, intentional choices, mindful choices, and then stick to your decision and your choice and take action on them because one thing is to say it to think it and to want to do it another thing is to actually do it and to take action on them yeah and yeah to take action on them and to stick with them no matter what shows up because life is going to throw you curveballs people are going to question you and your decisions so a lot of times for example my clients keep their journey very private very private because it's something that they're getting used to themselves and they don't want the external chatter and influence from other people questioning their decisions their choices asking them why they're doing these things they really want to look inside and focus on themselves so here are the three questions number one is what do you want to change right now that you haven't taken action on be super honest with yourself there must be at least one thing whether that's your job a relationship your health your wellness movement food stress management there must be something something that you want to change, you know you want to change, you know that although you say you're okay with it and that it's normal, that deep down in your gut, you know it's not. That you dream about this at nighttime, you dream about how it can be different, and because you might be afraid um, to get started, you might be afraid to share this with somebody else, with your with your friends, and what they're going to think about you, you haven't taken action on it yet. And things keep coming up that is challenging this for you. So that's number one. Really get honest with yourself. Number two is to dig deep, dig very, very deep as to what is stopping you from taking action. Is it that you don't have enough information? You don't have enough support? You're scared, which is totally valid. You're afraid. And most of the time, if you feel afraid, that's when you know you need to take action. I'm so serious. I am so freaking serious. The second you feel like, oh my gosh, this is so scary, that's a sign. When I started like my self-development and and everything, um, I used to listen to a lot of Oprah Super Soul Sunday podcasts. And every person that she interviewed that was successful, you know, whatever definition that was for them, they always started scared. They always started scared. And challenge yourself to do scary things every once in a while. I've gone skydiving. (laughs) I've traveled to Australia and lived there for four months. I lived in Mexico for four months. I went away to college. Um, I've repelled down this enormous wall. I've always challenged myself to be in physically (laughs) scary situations because you get to learn a lot about yourself, right? So really think of what is stopping you from taking that action. Is it that you're scared to tell your parents? You know, you're going to break your routine and your habits. You're going to have to stop going to brunch every Sunday night with your every Sunday morning with your girlfriends because your priority is changing, you're afraid of what they're gonna think of you, right? So what is stopping you from taking this action? And number three is, I really want you to think what you have to lose. If you actually do take action, what do you have to lose? There is always something to lose and there is always something to gain, okay? Sometimes to put things into perspective, I ask myself, What would 90-year-old Naomi think about this? About this decision that I'm making right now? Is 90-year-old Naomi gonna say, girl, did you really not take action on that because you were scared? 
what were you scared of? Why didn't you just give it a try? Why didn't you just give it a try? What did you have to lose? What Fulanito and Perencejo were gonna say about you? Where are they now? Because you weren't gonna get the support of your family initially. Because people always come around if they love you. It's hard to understand at first, but people always come around. Right? That's one thing. And two, you know, that's one question. And two, I always encourage people to think of what's your heart? What do you want your heart to be? Especially with health and wellness. What do you want your challenge to be? Yes, it's hard to start making lifestyle changes. To start thinking about your food. To start creating space for what you need to do to get that workout in. To get that meal prep in. It is scary and challenging to do that. You know what's also scary and challenging? To get older and and your quality of life decline. One thing is to be older and one thing is to, you know, the quality of life that you want to experience. Do you want to be immobile with a bunch of doctor's appointments? No, sweetie pie, not right now. My son is here. Um, let me finish this, please. So do you want, do you want all of that for you? Please don't open it. Do you want all of that for yourself, right? Mm -hmm. Do you want that to be your heart? Or I want <laughs> do you want that to be your heart? That you're in doctor's appointments from doctor's appointment to doctor's appointment. If you have a gallon size Ziploc some. bag full of... I want some. I want some. <laughs> Please go in and we'll talk about it in a second. No, I love them. Let me have them. <laughs> Do you, because I've seriously seen older people I'm with a gallon size. I'm going to open it. With a gallon size. I'm just going to open size, it because I just got I With a gallon size Ziploc bag. Eric's, you know what he wants to open? He wants to open a BJ size bag of cheese doodles of Amy's cheese doodles let me show you this is what he wants because he's hungry all right go ahead go inside i can have it no go in i'll talk to you in a second Woo! parenting at his best he was not feeling well so he's here home from school anyway hopefully he goes away now um i've seriously seen people in my media family with gallon size ziploc bags of medication right and swelling and joint pain and all that so I really encourage you to think about what your heart wants to be whether it's now to build and compound on your health and wellness or is it for or is your heart going to be later when it kind of is too late because it's like the rubber band effect where your body just starts to give out and it starts to get tired and then you're going to have to have support from medication right to help you um live for as long as possible right and it's actually quite funny because today i had a consultation call with a wonderful woman and she said she's like i'm terrified right now to be joining and doing this for myself but she said you know what i'm more terrified about what my future can look like because she's had examples in her immediate family of women struggling with their health, of women passing away prematurely, of women really being in all these doctor's appointments and every week being a different situation for them, therefore affecting her because she loves them dearly. So it's so interesting that she's like, I'm so terrified right now but I'm more terrified of what my future can look like. So I'm leaving you with these three questions. I encourage you that once you figure out what that is, what's stopping you, 
and then really checking in with yourself and saying what do you have to lose if you try and sometimes you do lose things and you do have to be prepared for that there's friendships that are lost there's routines that are lost you know but you really have to be honest with yourself and what you want and think about what your 90 year old self would say i listen to 90 year old naomi all the time <laughs> I do because I don't want to get to that age and be like, wow, I didn't do that just because I was scared. If it's something I know I really want to do, it would benefit me. Okay? So they have a lot of wisdom. Anyway, I'm going to go. I have chatted on and like had a whole negotiation deal over cheese doodles with my son. Thank you guys for hanging in there. Again, I'm Naomi, food and health coach. If you are interested in one-on-one -on -one coaching for six months, that is what I offer. We work on your nutrition. We work on your movement, creating a lifestyle change that fits you and your schedule and what you enjoy because that's what's most important right um anybody can do a lifestyle but uh, a diet but maintaining a lifestyle in rooted in wellness is challenging and i'm here to help you and support you through that all right so if you're interested i invite you to book a consultation the link is in my bio or you can send me a dm and we can get chatting and i cannot wait to support you because this is really my passion is something that i have lived experience in and i've helped a, a good amount of really powerful women who are busy that is my favorite excuse i'm busy who are busy they're moms they're in PhD programs, they're principals, they're teachers, they're lawyers, okay? They're busy women. So if your main thing is that you're busy, you got this mama, I promise you. So if this is what you know you need, then I'm here for you and I invite you to a consultation. Thank you for hanging in there and I'll talk to y'all soon, bye.